So I, we are going to start with a small introduction about AstroFi, not in sales related, just to give a bit of history who we are. Uh, introduction about Airflow dataset. I don't know how many of you know the concept of the dataset, but I think most of you, hopefully. And then talking what we, we, de we define as AstroFi is as dynamic workflow orchestration, multi dax dependencies, and how we use it, this concept in a real time data pipeline with PubSub, then a demo, and then hopefully with a question and answer session. So. Astrafy is like a company that uh, is a data consulting company based on what we call today modern data stack, uh, founded by me and the three of ex colleagues of mine that uh, have the same passion about data, data engineering, data analytics, and DevOps, and everything about data around it. And we founded in, in Geneva in May, in May 2022, and then uh, we found as well another entity in Spain in, in Madrid in 2023. And uh, we are doers and not talkers. We try to do one thing, we do it good, hopefully. And we have expert, expert as I said, in a, in a, a lot of uh, what we call, to, call today in the data core pillars, so data transformation, data governance, and all what is like covered between today of data model stack. So myself, I, I'm Andrea. As you can understand from my accent, probably I'm Italian, coming from a little village where my passion about data and uh, IT uh, starts, and uh, as well, I'm a really a passionate about sport, uh, basically in also what is running and ultra running. And uh, here with me today, I have Nafel. Nice to meet you guys. My name is Nafel. I'm from Paris in France, and I joined Astrofy uh, as a data engineer in 2023. I'm passionate about data automation, and I'm currently working on uh, multiple data projects at luxury watch brands um, in Switzerland. And yeah, so today we are going to present you like how we can organize like DAGs in Airflow using PubSub to do some event triggering and, and how to make all our DAGs run smoothly. So to give you a bit of context, I see today, we see it at Astrafy, independently if you're working for a small company or like a large company, that more and more there is this concept of data segregation between different teams where we have basically a data central platform team that is collecting the data and then need to deliver downstream to other different teams like marketing team, a customer team, like financial team, the data that they are collecting. So imagine that we are working for a global e-commerce company where you have, we are collecting data, transactional sales data from different country uh, that we are later on, we are going to demo and we are for simplicity, we are taking data from Europe and the US. And then we have two different teams. We have, there, is, there is data central team that needs to uh, collect the data uh, separately, because we want to have separation between data coming from e Europe and data coming from US for kind of some of governances, for governances regulation. And then we, we want, we have another team that doesn't care about this, this differences between Europe and uh, US. They want to have just collecting all the data and then do, do some analysis of that. So because of that, we want and we need to have some concept of like uh, dependencies between data uh, orchestration and data workflow. And uh, what we see today that uh, data set is going to help us to do this kind of context. And Nafel now is going to give a brief, brief introduction about Airflow data dataset. Yes, thank you. Uh, first, I just want you guys like uh, raise your hand if you use Airflow data sets at your company, um, like not on a daily basis or in your projects in general. OK, I'm just two, three, OK. So what are uh, Airflow data sets? So as not much of you raise hands, I guess uh, not everyone knows about it. So um, Airflow data sets, they're a really powerful concept um, that allows us to logically group uh, data. So grouping data is really crucial for uh, managing data dependencies uh, across different workflows. So the data sets, uh, they can help uh, to streamline the coordination between different uh, DAGs in your Airflow instance. Um, so when you have an upstream task uh, that is also known as a producer, uh, will update this data set, it will automatically trigger all the, the downstream DAGs uh, that consume from these, uh, like the, down, the downstream consumer DAGs that are scheduled based on these data sets. Um, so this feature doesn't only simplify uh, data dependency management, but it also enables to have a really uh, seamless uh, coordination across all of your workflows. 
Um, so in this illustration, uh, as you can see, so we have the bag number one that will update uh, the data set, and then it will trigger uh, the tasks in the bag number two. Um, so we can see how these DAGs are interconnected, and that's the whole uh, nature of Airflow datasets. You may be wondering what are the benefits of this feature and why would you want to use it? Um, so first, the concept of data-driven uh, task scheduling. So with the data sets, tasks are triggered automatically. So you don't, you don't need to like have a rigid scheduling or like cron scheduling. Basically, the, date, the, the DAGs will run as soon as the data is updated. So this really ensures that all your workflow is like executed uh, in a timely manner and as soon as the data is available. Uh, second, there is a simplified dependency management. So it really simplifies complex dependencies. So if you have really like 100 of DAGs in your Airflow instance, uh, it may be hard to figure out which DAG needs to run at which time of the day based on which data. So this whole concept of data set makes it much more simpler. Also improved efficiency. So as the DAGs only run when they need to, when the data is ready, you also optimize resource utilization. So if you were not using data sets, maybe you would have a DAG that will constantly poll for data to check is the data available? And that would like uh, use a lot of resource. So this uh, also helps reducing this. And lastly, enhanced uh, modularity. So because data sets allow for logical data grouping, uh, this makes all the workflow more modular. So you can reuse different components from different projects, and that makes it more like flexible and scalable. Next, Andrea will talk about uh, the dynamic workflow orchestration. Thank you, Rafael. Yeah, so the idea of using data set, actually in Astrophy was behind before the data set concept was arriving from Airflow. Because we, need, we see that we need basically this logic of kind of data dependencies between different pipeline of data, different teams that need to be, to have the flexibility to, to first be triggered the, the data flow pipeline, the, work, the workflow pipeline, so the DAGs, when the data are arrived and as soon as possible. So we, we, as soon as the first pipeline finish, we want the downstream pipeline ready to start. And we want also to be able to allocate the resource uh, based on the workload of the, of the resource of data that we are behind. So we want to define a, basically uh, a logic that allows to our workflow uh, DAGs to, to be able to run whenever the data are available. So we want to set up a logic and uh, a dynamic task generation based on some specific data logic. And this is why we are using really heavily the concept of data set at Astrafy. And, and what we see uh, where we are using this kind of dynamic workflow are like event-driven pipeline, where basically you have pipeline of workflow data that are triggered by an external event, it can be whatever kind of event, like I know, a file drop in a bucket or like a signal that are like linked also as well to real data, processing data that are coming from uh, IoT, sensor, whatever. And then what we also we are working a lot with is like the automated data quality check, where before trigger the downstream of pipeline, we want to be sure that the integrity and the consistency of data is well preserved. And then last but not least, as I mentioned before, is the resource optimization. So we want to dynamically allocate the workload of the resource based on the workload of the data that we have. And then this one brings us today with the usage of multi-DAG dependencies, as Nafel explained before with the definition of data set. Basically, we see that today, when more likely when your, your team is, is spread in different teams uh, and using different airflow as well, do you want to have like DAGs that like are inter interconnected with each other. So whenever a DAG is, is finished, then another DAG is going to be triggered. And now we do that, we do that based on a data set that we are going to demo later on. So we, we are using what uh, we say like a, a, a scheduler based on a central core and coordinate uh, a shared data set. And then uh, like that we have like uh, a streamlined data workflow from one DAG to another. So how to achieve that? 
in order to achieve that, what we use as well, in order to, to have real-time data pipeline, we are using the concept of PubSub. I don't know who's, uh, who knows what is the PubSub. Okay, quite a few, much more than the data set. That is he's kind of worried, but uh, <laughs> okay. So for people that doesn't know who that PubSub is, like Napier now is going to introduce yeah. it. Okay. So yeah, PubSub, which stands for uh, Publisher Subscriber, it's a messaging service from Google Cloud, and as we're a Google Cloud partner at Astrofy, we tend to want to use these kind of tools. And uh, this service uh, allows us to integrate real-time data delivery. So in this whole context of Airflow DAGs and data sets, we also want to use PubSub to be able to, let's say an example, like we have a data team that uh, process data on a daily basis, and they want to let uh, the marketing team uh, to let them know that the data is done being processed and uh, they can, it can be consumed. So they will use PubSub to instantly send a message to the other instance and help the other marketing team to trigger their own DAGs that will process the data. So this is like a, like a simple illustration of how PubSub works. So as I said, like we have the publishers, uh, we can have different DAGs that will publish different messages to a uh, same topic. So a topic is in PubSub, the concept where like all the messages will be grouped in a single topic and mul multiple subscribers can subscribe to a topic and receive the messages by pooling them. So now we, we would like to give you a small demo of all of this and to show you how we can integrate Airflow with PubSub and based on the, on the example that uh, Andrea presented in the beginning, um, we, will, we will show you how this works. So here is our uh, Airflow instance. Um, so as you can see here, uh, we have three different DAGs. So for the purpose of the demo, we put all of them in the same Airflow instance to make it easier to, to show you. But I just need you to imagine that these two DAGs here, so the ingestion one and the consolidation one, these are in the data team Airflow instance, and this DAG, the unique one, data marketing team, let's imagine that it's in another Airflow instance from the marketing team. So these are separated. So what the data marketing team DAG is doing, uh, as you can see, there is one task currently running. So this is a task that is using the PubSub uh, sensor, pool sensor operator. So it's an operator in Airflow that allows you to constantly pull for new messages on a PubSub topic. So let's say like every uh, 30 seconds, it will pull for messages and check if there is any new message. So as we can see here in the logs, so as you can see, uh, like every few seconds, it's pulling uh, a maximum number of five messages from the subscription. And for now, there are no uh, zero messages found. So it just keeps pulling them. And then we have the ingestion, ingestion DAG. So this is a DAG where we can uh, simulate the ingestion of data coming from different regions. So we, in our example, we have uh, Europe and US data. So we will trigger uh, here the DAG and we will pass some parameters to this DAG to ingest data from, from Europe and US. So if you click on trigger, Okay, so here when we trigger the DAG, we have some configuration parameters with default values. So we have like the transaction ID, uh, transaction timestamp that uh, dynamically uh, updates whenever we click on trigger. Uh, customer country, so in this example, let's say Italy. Uh, the region is EU, the currency of this transaction is in Euro, and let's say an amount of 200, or yeah, 1,200 and we'll set the table ID here to payment transaction EU. So I forgot to mention, but in this example, uh, we are using uh, Google BigQuery uh, for storing all our data and retrieving it. So let's trigger this DAG. And in the meantime, Andrea, you can show in BigQuery what we currently have. Yeah, so in this, in this BigQuery project, we have a data set called sales. And in this data set, we have three different tables. So we have the table for European transactions, US transactions, and the global payment transactions, which will consolidate data from both. 
so we have here the same schema as the parameters that I previously showed on, on Airflow. And if we go back to the logs of the DAG that we just triggered, we can see that, so the, the ingestion processed the EU transaction. And in this example, we are just uh, adding the VAT um, to, the, to the initial amount. And then we are inserting the data into BigQuery. So yeah, this is the graph that shows. So we have the region selector, and it was processed as an EU transaction, and then directly inserting data into BigQuery. So if we see the BigQuery table now, the one for EU, and you do a preview of the data, we can see now that our transaction uh, from Italy was, was uh, registered. And now we will just do the same quickly for US, and actually, you just go back on the main DAGs page, yeah, and refresh it. Yeah, you can see now that the global data consolidation, uh, which is scheduled based on that data set, so it currently has one out of two data sets updated, which is the data set EU because uh, EU data was just ingested. So the DAG is not triggered yet because it's just one out of two. So that's the like power of data sets. It's like you can specify um, how many data sets you want to update before triggering this DAG. So now let's do the same for uh, US. So let's say uh, USA, and then US, the currency USD, whatever amount, and let's put US, yeah. <coughs> so in this case, because we are the the ingestion is coming from a different region. The flow will be a bit different. So the region selector will go to the, to the path of US. And instead of uh, just like calculating with the VAT, instead it will fetch the conversion rate from USD to Euro to figure out like the final amount in, in Euro. And then insert the data into BigQuery. And finally, it will update the data set linked to the US. So if we go back now to the main, yeah, and refresh, we will see that we have now zero out of two because uh, as soon as all data sets were updated, the DAG is triggered and we just go back to zero and start again listening for any new updates. Um, so this DAG, what does it do? Is just like uh, consolidating data. So the marketing team wants to know, uh, wants to make analysis on data coming from all the world. So it doesn't want to process when the EU comes and then process when the US comes. It wants to process the whole thing. So now that EU and US was updated, we can now consolidate the data and send the pub sub message. So if we see again the, the marketing team uh, DAG in the logs, we will see now that it was able to pull one message coming from the subscription. And this message is just saying all the data was processed for today and is ready to be consumed. So this means that the marketing team can now trigger all their uh, downstream processing. They can apply anything they want, like machine learning or whatever. Uh, in this example, we are just pulling the data and just showing it. But yeah, it's just for the example. And one important thing, there is a trick we can do in Airflow to because one, one comment is like the pub sub pull sensor, as soon as it pulls messages and process them, the DAG will be marked as success and will just be completed and that's it. And you have to trigger again if you want to pull new messages. So we have uh, as last task of this DAG is a self-trigger task that will use the trigger DAG run operator, uh, which is a great operator where you can just pass the DAG ID and it will just run this tag. So in our case, we have this as a last task and it will trigger uh, its own DAG ID, which will allow the DAG to constantly running and constantly pulling for uh, new messages. And yeah, so that's, that's uh, mostly all we wanted to show you for this. Andrea. Yes, I don't, I don't know if you, if you follow a bit the logic, <coughs> but the workflow is working 
uh, easily. Okay, this was just a simple demo to show you the, how to use data set in order to trigger multiple DAGs. But basically, what what I want to like underline he, underline here is like here, as you said, we have two da data set that need to be updated before to trigger another DAG. But what if one data set it has been triggered multiple time during a day? And then, for example, we have multiple transactions for US, and then you have just one, tra one transaction for Europe. So it means that the data set of uh, US is updated two times, and data set of Europe just once. But the, the global, the marketing data set, the, the DAG, doesn't care when the, the data set has been updated. As soon as the two match, is starting again. But here, we, when, if you have like a different logic, more complex logic that you want to apply, what we use a different client is the combination between dataset and XCOM, where you can have like a combination between these two logic in order to have like more sophisticated and detailed like granularity of uh, of implementation of logic to uh, trigger the dependencies of other DAG. For example, if you know, you know that you want to trigger the DAG just once a day independently when the the dataset are updated like multiple times or just one. You, you can just implement a logic using XCOM and data set to have this kind of logic. So it depends here only a lot of the, the logic that you have be behind and how you want to use data set, but uh, with XCOM and data set, you can achieve mainly all the kind of possibility. So thanks for listening to us.